Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Escada, and there's nobody else here, so that makes for a really awkward talk show. I get that. These are our mini episodes until our beautiful new studio is complete, upon which we will relaunch the show with a brand new look and feel and a new co-host. Uh, speaking of which, our hashtag of the week has been TD Host. You guys can guess the co-host. I might have seen somebody guess the co-host. I'm not, not going to lie. I was really surprised that somebody got it, but... Here's a hint for anybody else wanting to continue to play the game. Name starts with J. There you go. Name starts with J. It's a hint. It's a guy. Name starts with J. Uh, I'll give you one more hint tomorrow, and then uh, and then we will see where we can go from there. But for now, let's hit the headlines. <laughs> 3D printing is opening a whole world of customization these days, and a magic candy factory aims to do that with everybody's favorite food, candy. German company Katja is already a very successful candy maker. Launched a 3D printer for gummy candy that you can customize called the Magic Candy Factory. It's a 3D printer that prints gum candy through an iPad-based UI, so it's super easy to use. And printing happens when the candy gets melted down enough to squeeze through the pump and then onto the build surface, just like in a regular 3D printer. And then, of course, the 3D printer in the Magic Candy Factory builds layers of gummy candy until you get your little gummy shape, which is pretty awesome. So right now, there are about 10 different flavors and 7 different colors available. They want to add more variety soon, and it costs just 5 euros to buy a 10-gram candy, uh, which is pretty cool. It takes about 5 minutes to print out your delicious candy masterpiece. Now, if you're in Berlin or nearby, you can actually test out the Magic Candy Factory, but Katjas wants to actually sell this device to major companies to put in places like theme parks, of course, because who doesn't want to stand around making a piece of candy instead of going on rides? So from the super delicious to the slightly concerning, we might have a strike on our hands and it could affect the video games that you're waiting for next year. If you're a gamer, you probably don't know the names of the voice actors in your favorite games, but you definitely know their work by the sound of their voice. So video game projects in production might be threatened by a potential strike that's looming for the Video Game Voice Actors Union. They're part of SAG-AFTRA, which is the actors and television, like pretty much every actor who's in a union is in SAG-AFTRA. So they're part of that union and they want to get back-end residuals. Meaning, let's say you have a Grand Theft Auto V on your hands, sells millions of copies, and those voice actors who do those great things that help you enjoy the game don't get paid for that extra back-end. They don't get bonuses. And they want a piece of that. Just like, say, Robert Downey Jr. got for the original Iron Man. Now, they're voting right now on whether or not they want to strike. If 75% of SAG-AFTRA decides that the video game voice actors should strike, it'll happen. And it could affect some video games in production right now. Uh, some famous names that have lent their support to a strike are Jennifer Hale of the Mass Effect series, Fem Shep, if, you, uh, if you're familiar with Fem Shep, Will Wheaton, Ashley Birch. There's a lot of different video game voice actors who are saying, hey guys, we deserve some back-end bonus money, too, because these are huge blockbusters, and we're a big part of it. And honestly, I kind of agree with them. I think they deserve it. So, okay, very last thing we have to discuss is NASA's crazy little hedgehog rover. This is super cute, but it might be used to explore asteroids someday. As I said, it's called the Hedgehog Rover. This is a cube-shaped device with some really rugged knobs at its corners, and asteroids are pretty craggy and hard to navigate, as we saw with uh, our little Philae lander from Comet 67P, but this Hedgehog Rover is actually designed with flywheels inside that spin up to very high speeds, but very slowly, and then all of a sudden a NASA engineer can stop those flywheels in a specific way to make it move one way or the other, or even do what's called a tornado spin to get up and out of a, a little pit or some kind of crevice that it might get stuck in while on the surface of an asteroid. You know, now that I'm looking closely at it, I think if you slap some hearts on the sides of that thing, you could actually technically call it a weighted companion rover. So speaking of residuals, um, NASA, it's time to pony up. You gotta pay them. You gotta pay the man. All right, guys, let's talk about Mod Squad. <laughs> Squad. Honestly, this is the keyboard that nobody wanted and nobody asked for, but it exists anyway, and it's pretty hilarious, so let's take a look. This is from a guy named Tom Scott. He decided there had to be a full physical emoji keyboard, so he got to work. This is made of 14 actual keyboards all put together with individual stickers for each emoji representing what each key presses, 
on all of the keys. There's over a thousand keys. So this guy did a lot of work and placed each sticker individually. So this is very serious emoji business. This is where I would use a serious emoji face because he worked really hard on it. It does cover all of Unicode 8's emoji, but he did say he might have to add one more keyboard maybe sometime next year for Unicode 9, probably because he is super sick of seeing emojis. Uh, honestly, this is delightful. It's one of those things that, again, nobody wants or needs, but it's super fun to see, and I love seeing what the internet in general comes up with because you guys are just so darn creative. Uh, speaking of creativity, we have to talk about our photographer of the day. Our photographer of the day comes from Adela, who took this fabulous picture on her iPhone 6. Meow, it's a little kitty. Hello, Ashley. My name is Adela, and I live in Bucharest, Romania. I really love Tomorrow Daily, and I'm looking forward to the new studio. I took this photo while I was at a Sunday lunch at my aunt's house. My aunt's kitten somehow got in my sister's backpack. I thought it was the cutest thing ever, so I took a picture of her with an iPhone 6, and I love how it turned out. I, of course, give you permission to use this photo in your show. Well, yes, that is actually the cutest picture ever. I'm going to give you that. You win the award. You get a, you get a gold medal. Cutest picture ever. Uh, that kitten is adorable. And if you guys want to send in your photography, you can send it to us at tomorrow at cnet.com. Uh, make sure you give us permission to use it on the show. Send us your picture. That's a really important part of it. And then also tell us a little story about it, just like Adela did. And uh, if you want to find us on Twitter, I'm at Ashley Escada. The show's at Tomorrow Daily. And producer Logan is at Logan Moy. Uh, if you want to send somebody to the show, which I always appreciate, you can send them to TomorrowDaily.com. It's just that easy. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. That's it for us here on our mini episodes. But until then, be good humans, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>